these get ready for transcription number 175 and 176 from Kalas Chandra magazine at 100 words per minute, 5 seconds. Start. The Employees Provident Fund Scheme was introduced by an ordinance in 1952. Later, an enactment came and in the early stages, the scheme was made applicable only to six selected industries which were supposed to have the capacity to pay. Now, of course, more than 60 industries are covered by the Employees Provident Fund scheme. But the Act gives the appropriate government certain powers to exempt certain factories from the operation of the Employees Provident Fund scheme. Thus, the employees in a particular industry are governed by more than one provident fund scheme. As is obvious, frequent changes in the place of employment take place and a worker who is today employed in an exempted factory may in due course join a factory where the employees provident fund scheme under the act is applicable. Then he faces a lot of difficulties in the transfer of his funds from the exempted scheme to the statutory scheme. It is therefore time that the government did away with exemptions altogether. Then Mr. Vice Chairman, the need for a comprehensive social security scheme is well accepted in the country. The government of India some 10 years back appointed a working group headed by Mr. V. K. R. Menon, director of the regional office of the ILO in New Delhi. That working group went round the country and produced a comprehensive scheme for social security and the recommendation was that the employees state insurance and the employees provident fund scheme should be merged into one social security scheme which would also be able to give workers unemployment benefits and old age pension. It is more than 10 years since this report was submitted and though the government appears to have accepted the recommendation in principle nothing has been done in that matter that is probably due to the fact that a number of provident fund schemes are exempted from the operation of the statutory scheme how will the government merge these exempted schemes into the social security scheme so if the government are serious about merging the employees state insurance and the employees provident fund schemes it is time that they did away with exemptions it appears that the government of india have granted exemptions where under the law they had no power to do so that is a wrong trend and i must voice my protest against this then mr vice chairman the management of the employees provident fund by the trustees needs a great deal of improvement now under this scheme some 30 lakh workers contribute some of them contribute 6 percent of their meager wages others contribute 8 percent the trustees are so callous that they do not see to it that all the deductions from the workers meager wages are deposited with the proper authorities in time the result is that lakhs and lakhs of rupees deducted from the workers wages as their contribution to the provident fund schemes are not deposited with the provident fund authorities 
or appropriate authorities the employers are allowed to convert the workers savings into their working capital it is the business of the administration it is the business of the trustees to see that every rupee deducted from the workers is deposited with the appropriate authorities within the time limit laid down under the rules what we find is that there are penal provisions but those penal provisions are not enforced and employers are allowed to convert workers savings into their capital that is highly undesirable it is also harmful to the workers because